Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk about five reasons why people will fail the PE exam. Uh, a lot of these reasons also apply to the <coughs> EIT exam, but I'm talking more specifically about the PE because of how more challenging it is than the EIT and the amount of time that you need to put into it. So let's start. The number one reason people fail the PE is because of, of physical exhaust, exhaust, exhaustion. Basically, they are tired. What I mean by this is a lot of people don't prepare enough during the day of the exam. So a lot of people... Um, now, a little background. The PE exam is eight hours. And if you're taking the SE exam, I think it's five hours on one day or six hours in one day and then another six hours the next day. So it's, it's tough. It's... it's to physically be there you need to like uh, have a light breakfast or like have a breakfast that will not interfere with your stomach that will like keep you going like will, will keep you mentally awake and then during during the break you have a 40 minute break during that break you need to also be prepared like either bring your lunch or like uh, look for restaurants around there that are fast and grab some food real quick a lot of times, like, people just burn out, like, they cannot deal with it. Four hours of, like, heavy mathematical thinking of engineering burns you out. And then the second part is even tougher than the morning session. So by when the second part starts, like, a lot of people are already burned out. So you want to be very, very mentally prepared for this. Uh, one thing that you can do is just, like, do, like, a mock-up PE exam, like, one weekend. Take an eight-hour test, like, do a mock-up test and see how you feel. And like try to like simulate the the environment for the PE, and that's a good way to to know what to do. You also want to like have like your food prepared, and that way like you will not be hungry. You don't want it to be super heavy because you don't want to upset your stomach during the exam. So you want something light, but that will fulfill you because you don't, you are not allowed to have food in the in the test center. So you need to be thinking about all this stuff. So that's the first reason. Now the second reason is because. A lot of times you have insufficient uh, reference materials. I'm talking personally from my experience for the structural exam. Uh, when I took the PE, um, I didn't pass it, but it was because of other reasons that I will talk about them in a bit. Now, a lot of times uh, people don't have enough material. What I mean is, like, for example, in my case, uh, I don't know, I had the Steel Code 2012, I think, the, blue, the black one. But like the, the, when I took it, they acquired the latest one and I just didn't have it. And a lot of the references were not in the same page. So I was like struggling to solve some of the problems. So that's one thing that you need to, to, to take, take things into account. Try to take all the materials that are listed on the page that you will need. And also try to take all the materials that you know. So for example, for me, I took some of my steel books from college that I have read in college. So I already knew where most of the things are. So uh, that's one thing that you want to do. You need to like double check and triple check and four check all your reference material that you have the latest one, that you have what they're going to be using for the exam. And um, basically everything that can give you an edge. You don't want to like lack something like a steel book or something that later on you will be like, well, I cannot solve anything because I don't have the latest book or I just didn't even bring the book. Like for me, I remember uh, I... I think I forgot at home the wood book, the NDS, I think it was. So I was like, damn it. Mm, it is what it is. Now, number three is lack of rest and stress. A lot of times when you're taking an exam as important as this one, uh, you're just very stressed out and you really don't think take your time to actually relax. Like one thing that I like to do whenever I take any type of test or anything of important thing, like an interview or whatever it is, a presentation, the day before it, I try not to study a little bit. Maybe I do a little small reading or light reading, but I don't really study hardcore because, I mean, one day more is not going to do anything. And you want to have a good sleep that day. And that's one thing, especially if you're traveling. Like, for me, I had to drive, like, six hours. So, basically, what I did, uh, I drove, like, the day before in the morning. Then I got there, and I just, like, was walking around, you know, checking some new places. I went to a bar to have dinner, and then I just went to sleep early because I wanted to be well rested for the exam. So I'm trying not to be too stressed out. Like, I mean, it's just an exam. I mean, yes, it's expensive. But at the end of the day, uh, 
mistakes and the, if you if you fail it, it doesn't really matter too much. That's what I tell to myself. You can always take it in the future. You can always get more prepared. It's just a test. So try not to get too stressed out. Uh, I have stress problems, like 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 I really have like very bad stress problems. But I've learned like with the years to just like think like I mean, such as like you know things happen for a reason and there's no such thing as failing. It's just a learning experience. And if you don't pass it the first time, you're going to pass it the next time. So don't worry too much about it. Try to be chill. Okay? That's the third reason. Now, the fourth reason is because uh, we have wrong references. And this is not that you didn't, didn't bring the book. It's more like, let's say you have all the material, right? But then in the material life, for example, let's say they're asking you for the size of certain type of ball or the grade of certain types of balls or, I don't know, some type of wood. Uh, like, I don't know, the sheer load that a certain type of wood can take or the moment that this type of wood can take. And let's say you have the NDS or you have the steel book or the concrete book, whatever type of reference you have, but you don't know where the hell these things are. So this is just like, yeah, you need to have your ref to your material, but you also know, need to know where everything is. And you need to memorize it. A lot of, a lot of things that people like to do is they, 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 they stick taps onto the steel book. You have seen every PE has like a steel book with a thousand tabs in their book. I have that for my, uh, for my serve, for the steel book. And I start, after I, I took the test, I was like, okay, this is something that I need to remember. I started adding tabs to all my books. That way, like I have, I have a memory of where they are. I don't want to be thinking 10 minutes how to calculate some type of, I don't know, like a moment diagram or set, on certain type of material, or I don't know, I don't know. I don't want to take like 10 minutes on that. I want to like, okay, uh, I remember I saw this in the steel book in this page. Well, not on this page. I remember I saw it in the steel book. Then you bring the steel books, you look for the tabs, it's here. Open up, grab the formula, write the numbers, go. So basically, you, this also saves, saves you time. You want to know where all the references are because of the same reason. Like, if you know where all the references are, where all the books are, you're going to save so much time. I think I calculated how much time you have to solve each problem in the PE. I think you have around six minutes, which sounds like a lot. And for the for some of the problems there are, especially during the morning session. I remember I finished the morning session with like 30 minutes left. I did pretty good in the morning session. But for the afternoon session, the, the problems were tough. And I really didn't uh, know the location of everything. So that's one thing that you want to know. You want to know where everything is located. Now. The fifth reason why most people fail the P and this was in my case, this was what happened in my case, and it probably wasn't gonna happen to you if you're working and stuff like that, is a lack of study. So basically, uh, you graduate, you have a lot of free time. Well, not a lot of free time, but you have more time when you're in college. Maybe you're on financial aid, maybe your parents are paying for your college. So you have time to party, you have time to study. Once you graduate, once you start working, uh, once you want, then you want to take the PE. It's very hard to get back into like a study mode after you've been away from school for a while. But not only that, it's also like very tough if you're working. I remember I would, I, when I signed up for the exam, I was like, okay, I'm gonna study like one hour every day, two hours every day. And a lot of times I would get out from work, like go to the gym, and I would just be so exhausted that I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go to sleep and like make it up on the weekend. And on the weekend, I just didn't want to study. Uh, I would just start. And that is something that is very hard to do, especially once you have a, like a job, like a steady job with a good salary. It's just hard to like set your mind to it, especially when you're like, you're comfortable, right? So if you're comfortable, you don't really maybe think that, eh, it's not that important, I'll do it later. But at the end of the day, I mean, you, it's a commitment that you need to make. You need to decide, decide uh, how much you want it. So for example, I, I'm very picky about all this stuff. So I try to write everything that I do the way I do it. Like I knew I wasn't gonna pass this test when I took it the first time because I just didn't put enough time. I was just like uh, going through a lot in my life and I was just very busy with work. I remember I would like get out of work like at 8 p.m. sometimes and I didn't wanna like get home and study one more hour, you know? Uh, they say that on average to pass the PE exam you need 150 hours. And uh, for me, I took like 
I think I studied like 40 hours and I studied more, mostly the morning session. I think this is the number one problem. If you're doing your master's, if you're doing, if you're working, it's just harder. It's just very hard. So if you can, what you can do is just like take a break from work. Maybe like, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I'm not saying you quit your work, but maybe one or two months and you study hardcore, like eight hours a day, six hours a day. And for sure you will pass it. That's what a bunch of my friends, they have done. They, I have a friend who took it two times and he just couldn't pass it. So he literally quit his job. He quit his job. He signed up for the exam. He, he was studying three months. He was just being a hermit and he passed it. Boom. And if you that, like, it's not that, it's just time. Uh, and you need to, to really think about this. Uh, also, it influences what type of, which exam you're taking. Uh, every PE exam is rated differently. And every PE exam has like a different level of like toughness. So for example, from what I've heard from like fellow, well, like from PEs and from fellow engineers, they say that the easiest ones are the management piece and geotechnical piece. Um, I think those two, those are the two I heard that they are the easiest ones. And I heard that the hardest ones are like the environmental, the structural. Um, there was another one, but I don't remember which one. And I've heard also that the AC exam, the, the structural engineer exams are super tough. Uh, so there's that too. So I hope this video has helped you. Um, I'm pretty sure I should be taking my own advice, but I'm pretty sure if you follow these five uh, reasons why people fail, like even and if you don't do them or if you like solve, you you you'll be sure to pass. Uh, if you have any questions about the PE, about my experience, uh, or about anything else in general related to engineering or civil engineering or structural, please let me know, guys. Um, subscribe to my channel, give me a like. And have a good one.